This is the solution for the third question of section A. It's the speed of sound in air. If you'd like to skip to any part of this, just click on it. So this experiment is about using a very important equation called the wave equation to figure out the speed of sound in air. The equation is, and you need to know this, it's wavelength times frequency. That's wavelength, um, the amount of wave it takes for the wave to repeat itself, um, multiplied by the frequency. That's how high or low a AM wave is. It's also the amount of waves per second, if you were to look at it as a wave. That's kind of just more in everyday life, the frequency, you know, what frequency means for a note. So when a pipe is closed at one end and open at the other, the antinode will be just hovering over the edge of the pipe, and that's one quarter of a wavelength. Twice that would be half of a wavelength, and four times that will be one full wavelength. Okay, now we've got wavelength times frequency is four times that length of the pipe times the frequency of, so let's say, a tuning fork. It's kind of complicated, but wait, there's even more. There's also this end correction thing, which is uh, a little effect we get because, as I said, the antinode is not exactly at the top. It's slightly sticking out of it, okay? So it makes the equation a little bit more complicated. We've got to add um, a 0.3 of the diameter to the length, and that gives us a new equation, which is um, V equals 4F, four times the frequency, L, the length of the air column, plus 0 0.3, the diameter of the pipe. And that is the formula we'll get for the velocity here. Velocity is the speed of sound in air. So in the first part, you're asked to draw a diagram of the apparatus you use here. For all the marks, you just got to have a vibrating tuning fork. They do say vibrating, so do little vibrating marks around your tuning fork in your diagram. Um, a column of air here, which is the, which is the pipe, um, and some way of measuring uh, the column of air. So let's say a meter stick, the calipers you want for measuring the, the diameter of the pipe. The next bit it says to describe the first position of residence. That's basically saying, all right, how do I do this experiment? Let's do it. So we hold the tuning fork over the column. That gives us three marks. Yeah. Change the length of the column until the loudest sound is heard. So move the pipe up and down, and then you should hear like a kind of a hover bike noise. And then you've achieved resonance. Now, using the data, calculate that speed of sound in air. You get your equation that we have. That's three marks. You get your tuning fork. You'll need to have that value 512. And then you just substitute in what you're given in the equation. So the 512 comes from your tuning fork, the 0.162 goes from the length of the air column, that's given in the data, uh, so is the 1.15 the diameter, that's also in there, so just sub them all in together and you get this, and the velocity of sound is 338.8 meters per second, so you might remember it's about 340 the speed of sound, so that's about right. This part asks why it's necessary to measure the diameter of the air column. So we think we mentioned earlier that the antinode is slightly outside the tube. The antinode is the highest bit, that, the peak of the wave there. And all you have to say is that wave extends partially above the top of the tube. And another other student carried out the experiment by measuring the length of the column of air for each of the two first positions of residence, but didn't measure the diameter. What a rebel. Explain how the student would have found that speed of sound in air. Okay, so a lot of this question is just understanding what they're asking. I've drawn a nice little diagram of it here. So these are the two things he's measured. He's gotten the resonance here um, with a pipe in this position by hovering a tuning fork over it. Okay, he's then pulled the pipe right out of the water and he's hit a second point at which he hears that weird hover bike resonance sound. So all you do here is you subtract L1 from L2, the two lengths there, because that will give you one half of a wavelength, okay? If you're not sure why that is, um, just go back a few times where we had that slide where I divided the wavelength up into four and you'll see it does kind of make sense. So if that's half wavelength, what's one wavelength? Well, that distance doubled, it's not bad.
So then to find the velocity, you get your wavelength, which we've just figured out by doubling that half wavelength. Um, multiply that by your frequency and you find your speed. You don't have to do any calculations, you have to describe what you would have done in that circumstance.